If it feels like we're living in troubled times, both culturally and spiritually, it, it's happening and you're not alone. To some, it may even seem like we're at the 11th hour. But as Christians, this is our time to stand firm and expose the lies of the enemy. Today, I'll be joined by two modern day prophets, pastors who do just that. I'm Drenda and this is Drenda on Guard. Let's get into it. We must stand up. There are answers and we've got to expose the darkness in the world so that we can be free. Self-made gods are nice things to have around until people actually start to need God. And that's what's happening in our culture. We need to do something. We need to say something. We need to stand up, be bold and courageous. You've got to stay on guard. Robin, Robin, it's so great to have both of you. I have to say, when I first heard your names, I was like, okay, who's Robin? But you're <laughs> yeah, both Robin. I guess right. everybody goes through that. So you actually do a program called 11th Hour. The 11th Hour. The 11th Hour. Yes. We are in the 11th Hour, aren't we? We are. We are. That's the place where you hear prophetic words from the Lord and you're able to make an 11th Hour decision. Wow. You know, I was, I was at a... Uh, up at Biltmore one time, and um, and I was just going through there at their museum, and I thought to see a 26-year-old vision uh, have a vision like that, and I wondered. I thought, are they on the? Were they on the Titanic? Were they? Were they? Because they were alive. Were they going to get on it or what? And it read in there. They said, I, their sister-in-law had a premonition. Yeah, they called it, and sent them word. In the, and to not get on the Titanic. And this is what she said. In an 11th hour decision, we decided not to go on the Titanic. Wow, 11th yeah, hour 11th, decision. And the Lord told me, he said, that's what your program is. Mm. He said, where I can speak prophetically and people can make this 11th hour decision mm. before the clock strikes 12. Mm. Yeah. You guys have a unique ministry and it's people are just opening their eyes to the prophetic. You said it's the sword yeah. of the spirit. That's it the hour is. we're living in. I feel the same yeah. way. Yeah, it is. You know, you, uh, and I, as fast as I can do it, you know, I'm, I, I was talking to Mylon one day and I said, you and I can talk for 30 minutes and don't say a lot because we talk so slow. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're both from the South. So you're from Warrior, Alabama, yeah. right? Yeah, You've Warrior, got Alabama. A ministry mm -hmm. there. I think Warrior, Alabama, yeah. for warriors well, to come out of there, that's the right place. And we're on the Warrior Robins exit. Yes, I've seen that exit. Yeah. I've seen it because I'm a Southern girl too. So yeah. I get it. I get what well, you're saying. Well, see, and, and what happens is, is where we are prophetically in time is the body. And I'll talk as fast as I can. The uh, every denomination is not a denomination. It was a revelation that mm. started as a revelation right. and it got denominated. Mm. But revelations is where it began. Mm. Uh, the Catholics have a revelation of the passion. Everything we know about the crucifixion came from them. And then from there, the Lutherans were born. The just will live by faith. That was a revelation. And then out of that, uh, the Wesley boys got a hold of sanctification and holiness, which was Methodism. Then after that, nine gifts of the Spirit. Then after that, word of faith came out of that. And then the prophetic. So the, the, if you look at it all as a piece of armor on the whole body. That's good. Uh, if you suit up the whole body with these revelations, there's only one. The last one's the only one mentioned in two parts the sword of the Spirit, mm. the word of faith and the prophetic coming together. And mm. that's when we can finally hold the blade and fight. That's awesome. And that's where we've arrived. That's beautiful. I love that yeah. picture. And I'm looking around at your swords and, and <laughs> that's what I thought about. Yeah. Yeah. And I had someone bless me with this in a moment where I was vacillating a little bit and saying, yeah. Lord, are you sure? That's Can right. I go? You know, I do. I think prophetic people do that. You know, yeah. Elijah did and go hide in a cave. And that's say, right. Lord. <laughs> well, <laughs> sure. I just, and it always comes after you just did something super bold 
where the Holy Spirit just did it through <laughs> yeah. you. You're the vessel. Yeah. And then your mind gets in there later and goes, what did I say? Yeah. What did I do? One time I told a lady, uh, she came to prayer for prayer and I said, you're pregnant with a little boy. And I see his picture. I see his blo a blonde hair and his blue eyes and he's wearing a little sailor suit. And then I, my mind went, what did you just yeah, say? What did you do? <laughs> and then I started to say, now, and then you try to cover it. You're like, now that could be a, uh, uh, a parable. It could be. Um, it could be <laughs> symbolic. It could be. That's a truth. But she was. She found out. She took a test. She was pregnant. She had the little boy, and I saw him at two, and he was in a sailor suit. Wow. It was exact. I still have that freeze frame. Do you get like freeze frames? Yeah. The Holy Spirit gives you pictures. Yes. And that, that little boy's a man now, and uh, he's wow. doing things for God. And but I saw him, and I just spoke it. I think we're oftentimes we let this get in the way sure. of the Spirit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, um, the Lord will show you things if, if you have eyes to see and ears to hear. Mm. Um, at four years old is the earliest memory I have of seeing the prophetic. Mm. I was outside in the woods at four years old and I came up on a beach and I was just, I leaned up against a tree and just watched it for a long time. And then my grandmother's, I had a, uh, Two of them there, my mother, my grandmother, and my great-grandmother was all there. And uh, they, they got to missing me. I'm four. I disappeared in the woods. And when they came out hollering for me, they said, where you been? I said, I've been at that beach. They said, beach? There's no beach. We're in no, Trustful, no. Alabama. There's no beach. And I said, no, there's a beach. And I described it. Well, years later, I was writing a book that I've never put out yet. And um, called The Way of the Warrior. And I was just writing this scene about the beach. And I stopped. I said, Lord, what was that? And I could see it. Uh, and at the beach, I saw a man and a woman under an umbrella. She had a floppy hat on. He had a hat on. There was kids out front, uh, like grown children, throwing a ball. I could see the shoreline. And I said, Lord, what was that? And I was sitting on the beach writing that story. And he said, well, look around you. And I looked over, and there sat Robin beside me with the floppy hat. I had this hat on. My kids were all playing on the beach. And I looked down the shoreline. He said, I showed you your future wow. at four. Wow. And I would see things like that along the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, to and God. And you know things, and you don't know why you know them, right? That's right. And so, I'm, I mean, as we say in Alabama, I almost got a whooping for that. <laughs> they thought I was lying, you know. And incidences <laughs> like that what, would happen a lot hmm. when I was growing up, you know. How did you, when did you know that this is a prophetic gift that oh, you're operating Lord. in? I, I don't really know. I just, it, to me, it was a way of life. You know, it's like a mus I'm a musician. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you punch numbers on a telephone, I hear a tune. <laughs> I hear the tune so I can sing it back to you. Mm -hmm. I can sing those numbers and you could find them. So I don't know. It was just such a part of me all my life. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I had the Lord. He came hunting me one night. And uh, where I lived, I lived in an old army barracks. I was raised in an army barracks out in the woods. That's, uh, yeah. I guess, a propos for a warrior. So <laughs> you know, I never thought of that. <laughs> yeah, you live in Warrior, Alabama. You were raised yeah. in an army in barracks. In an army barracks out but in the woods. And you're a warrior. Mm. You're 11th hour warrior. Yeah, and one night this light came in the room, flashing around the room like that. And me and my grandmother, I was about 10. We had to sleep in the same room, just a two-room barracks. And so I was on two beds like that. I was so scared I couldn't talk. I was watching that light and I said, called her mama. I said, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't talk. And I was trying to kick her bed across the room. She wasn't afraid of anything. She woke up and saw that light and it stopped right over her head, a round circle, just stopped. And I, I watched it a minute. She rubbed the wall, looked around the house, see if there was a reflection. And all of a sudden it broke off into two lights and started doing like this looking right at me. I'm, I'm up under the cover, you know. And then years later, I was preaching. I said, well, what was that? He said, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro in the earth. Hmm. Hmm. Looking for faith. Looking Searching for someone, for someone to show himself strong yes. in. He said, I came up on that hill that night hunting you. Wow. 
And that was his eyes watching me. Wow. Things like that would happen. And it's, sometimes it gets overwhelming to talk about it. Because hmm. it's like yesterday. And you have those freeze frames where you, oh, it's, it's just like. That's right. For me, it was a dream of women. I was in college. I have earlier things, but I went to Oral Roberts University and I was trying to, I just got really. Which is prophetic anyway. Yeah, 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 seriously on fire for God. Yeah. You know, VBS received Jesus, but then I got seriously on fire for God as a senior. It was either one or the other, choose this day. I was suicidal trying to serve the enemy and, uh, you know, going the system, the this, everything yeah. the school had for me, the future they had for me, and this this warfare was over me, and I felt it, and wow. I, it was voices telling me to take my life, and uh, wow. I, I chose Jesus. I went to the Spiritfield Church. I thought they're popping drugs in here. Nobody's this happy. <laughs> nobody's this yeah, huggy. Right. Nobody's this loving. But yeah. whatever they have, I want it. And I wow. kept going there. Got filled with the Spirit. Went out to ORU. Had a dream while I was there. Someone trying to call me. The enemy trying to pull me back. Wow. And I, the, dream, the dream I dreamt was these broken women. They were missing arms and part oh of their legs. Goodness. One was missing for her waist down and they were in a house of horror moaning. It's just vivid to me still today, mm. moaning and crying. And I was one of them. And I was missing from my knees down. And I began to think, wait, there's a God. There's a God. I remember there's a God. And I began to worship him. And as I began to worship him, I set up, I mean, it's like a horror house, right? Just horrible. Uh, everything was in black and white and I set up and I started worshiping God and as I did my legs grew out and wow. I was able to stand to my feet and then I started reaching out these other wow. women that were missing part of their bodies and they were broken and they were healing then and they were healing and in the end of my dream we were all worshiping God and my phone rang in my dormitory at ORU and I woke up from this dream and I heard you were running a good race who cut in I pick up that phone and it's that old past calling me Wow! and I knew then and that's kept me all these years vivid that I knew God was going to and, and every time I do certain things I I know say I'd had an abortion wow. so that's why I'm so emphatically against abortion yes. because I listened to the system the system that was trying to right. take my life then I'm suicidal that manipulates yes everything. it lies yes. to kids sure. the trans issue right now sure. yes. it's all about the same exact thing. it's a lie it's a lie and and they sell it under population you know to us it was population control they told us you're gonna live in a six by six by six cell isn't that interesting six by six by six how about uh, that? when you're when you're adults and there won't be any land you won't be able to go anywhere so we've got this is a blob of tissues aren't real babies these are not people uh, it's manipulation and totally and they're sure. now they're doing this with trans with these kids and they're yeah. telling them you're not in the right body it's satan you know sure it is. you're not a girl you're not a boy you know did god really say yeah uh, you know let's change this and that so they're hurting yeah. these kids but i have that freeze frame i was broken by the enemy all these other women are broken around us. Man. But when I cried to God, I was healed and whole, wow. delivered from Thank all of that, uh, all of that junk, all yeah. the Hallelujah. spirit of murder, this, all of that stuff. Hallelujah. And now I'm a mom of five and I love Jesus. I love the kids <laughs> and I'm fighting against Isn't abortion. That awesome? yes. Speaking of abortion, wow, some things are happening. They are. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about, uh, you were talking about having that dream. Mm -hmm. Now, Robin had a prophetic dream. I, I was sitting here thinking, should we even tell such a story right now? But we had a, uh, you had a dream. We had bought this house, but this was in reality. And the Lord kept prompting us, buy this, buy this, buy this. I said, Lord, uh, you know, we didn't want it really. We was looking at something else, buy it, buy it. And we didn't know why. And he kept it on the market for a year. And you had this dream. Maybe you ought to tell that. I had this dream on a Sunday night. Now, prior to the dream, the Lord would, bring, and I was telling you this last night, would move me to go up to this house and uh, just I would sit and pray in the driveway and I'd think, Lord, why am I here? There's no way we can, you know, we can, this is not even in our, our thought, you know, we couldn't <laughs> even do this. And uh, I would pray and then I would leave and then, and, this went on for a year or so. But on this Sunday night, I had this dream. You know, when I say it, it was one of those that just came out of nowhere. Mm. You know, it was vivid I don't like watch. Yours. Mm. That's um, what made me think of it. I don't watch mm. anything, you know. Yeah. I, it, so anyway, I, I had this dream, and I'm holding this little baby girl. 
and I could see her. I can freeze frame. I can see it. Her little legs were just fat. I could see the little, uh, you know, look, they look like they the have, rolls. yeah, the little rolls. <laughs> yeah, rubber bands. And, and yeah, <laughs> and and she doesn't, she don't have any clothes on, and I'm just holding her. And she's, I'm just looking at her, and I'm thinking, whose baby is this? You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I, this is not mine. <laughs> and so I'm holding this this beautiful little baby girl, and then from behind me, this hooded man comes in. I couldn't see his face, but I knew it was a man. He had a hood on. It was almost like a satanic uh, garb and came in and he had a dagger. And before I could stop him, he runs that baby through and just kept, and I'm just mm -hmm. screaming and crying. Mm -hmm. I woke up crying out mm -hmm. and I was saying, live baby, mm -hmm. please live baby. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, breathe, breathe. And I was on the, on the floor with this baby. And um, so this is I, all in the dream. Uh, yeah, in the dream. So I just come wide awake. Well, the next morning it just it so bothered me. And I we usually in the mornings, if the Lord has given us a prophetic dream, we we're discussing it. And I said, listen, you've got to hear. I know this is a, a prophetic dream. Mm -hmm. You need to listen to it. And he did. And I said, what does this mean? <laughs> what does this mean? And he just said, well, I'll ponder on it. Well, all through the day I go up to him and say, well, have you, do you, have you heard anything yet? He'll do that yeah. to me. He has the dreams more than I do. Yeah. Uh, and he'll tell me the dream and yeah. ask me, what is this? And I'll say, something. all day long I'd say, yeah. did you, have you got anything? Nothing. So then later on that afternoon, the house came to us. And our son-in-law even said, well, have y'all thought about that house? And we said, well, it's not for sale. So they made a phone call. They said, it is, said it's under contract, <laughs> but it's fallen through. Mm -hmm. And the owner, she was an elderly lady, and she said, I want them to have it. That's awesome. Well, we get a phone call back, and they say, if you're serious, they took your offer because the Lord told us, said, don't even... Don't even, don't even try, try to, to talk them down. Talk, just, just yeah. Don't them. dicker full, with them. Just yeah, do it. <laughs> full price. They said, can you close on Thursday? This is on a Monday. We now did. I have the dream on Sunday. <laughs> we put the offer in on Monday. They want to close on Thursday. Now we still don't know what the dream means. Mm -mm. So on, I'm, I'm all through the week I'm saying, have you heard anything about the dream? Have you heard anything about the dream? The day before the closing, the uh, other realtor calls our realtor and says, I could lose my license over this, but I've got to tell you, there was a lady put a contract on it from out of the country that was coming to put a women's clinic and she was going to perform abortions in, in that house. house. Wow. God said, no, that's my property. That's exactly, exactly. Right. My kingdom to yes. my servants, and, my sons, my daughter. And so then wow. we knew what the dream meant. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So that brings us up to. Yes, yes. And yeah. you know, I had, you, you reminded me of this. Again, the freeze frame that you see, God, it never leaves you. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. One night I had this intercession uh, after Gary and I were married. We had two children at that point. I was pregnant with a second one. And all these faces of little, little children come in before me. And I was interceding for them and interceding for them and standing in the gap, mm -hmm. fighting warfare over their lives. Because wow. when you've been taken yeah. advantage of and lied to by the enemy, yeah. it becomes your passion to free others sure. and exactly. set them free. Those lies that were sold to me as a young woman mm -hmm. who didn't know the Lord, you know, didn't know, God, Satan was trying to snuff out my life before, right. mm -hmm. oh, not yeah. only to snuff out the life sure. of children, but also all of those that are participating in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you had a prophetic word. Well, look uh, what it would have stopped if he could have stopped you. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And my whole heart and passion is to teach family and to reclaim See, awesome. that mountain of the family for God. He began in a family in the garden, and I believe we're going to end uh, the I end agree. time uh, revival harvest. Yeah. I believe it'll be fathers' hearts turning back to their children, yes. yeah. mothers reclaiming our identity, and women repenting from from shaking their fist and saying we want to kill our own children, our own offspring. Who does that? You know. That is so demonic in and of itself. You had a, sure. you had a dream, and I want to toss to that. Uh, not a dream, I'm sorry. You had a prophetic word about a leak happening yes. and the unborn, and I want to toss to that clip, and let's, just, let's talk about that, all right? Okay. It said, Noah's flood, 
The Philistine temple that fell, and so shall the Democratic Party be. They shall be no different. They cannot succeed. Hallelujah. You are hearing them shout their last shouts, roar their last roar, and control their last controllable avenue. For the roadblocks they have placed in the way are about to be moved today. You will hear of things that will absolutely astound you at what's going to happen. Amen. Pelosi fade away. Different ones just fade away like this. And when they do, the young lions that are in their place do not have what it takes to maintain such an evil reign. So they will begin to crumble. You young ones that have walked up into the place and you think you will pick up the baton and run with it and kill my unborn more and more and more. You are way out of your league now. I have said in times past, and the word is still there, that the squad will leave in a day. So everything's on its way out and on its way to leak out. To leak, yes, to leak out. Remember these words and remember today, says the Lord, for I have told you these things. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome back. Well, a stunning new report on an unprecedented Supreme Court leak rocking the nation this morning. Politico obtaining a draft majority opinion suggesting that the high court is set to strike down Roe v. Wade. Justice Samuel Alito writing in part, Roe was egregiously wrong from the start. Its reasoning was exceptionally weak and the decision has had damaging consequences. Roe and Casey arrogated that authority. We now overrule those decisions and return that authority to the people and their elected representatives. Wow, so that was a word you had. Someone brought it up to you that reminded you about that word, a leak and the unborn yeah. and the enemies can't be in just annihilated. Yeah, and, and see in that, in that sense what happened was is that he gave us a time marker mm. for, because if that whole prophecy that you heard, it talked about certain people fading away, mm -hmm. certain people disappearing, the Democrat party failing, everything going on like that. And then it said, the Lord was showing us, you'll see it in the time of the leak. Hmm. When this leak happens, so then you'll see it, uh, the young ones that are going to try to keep killing the unborn, they're not going to be able to do it. And now suddenly this leak is out and they're calling it a leak. Mm -hmm. Well, I couldn't have known that. No. How could I have known that? You know, I, I gave that prophetic word about that ship that time, but I heard the conversation. I, I, I heard Joe Biden carry on a conversation one night. I heard him talking. What did he say? Because I haven't seen this, Robin. Well, I mean, I just have, if I tell you, I have to tell you what he said and how he said it, but it's been done now. All right. I saw two leather rings like this. Uh, this is the only way I know to explain it. They were just leather rings and they were like on a wall mounted, just, you know, like rings. And Joe Biden was in one, and the other was empty. And, and the other one belonged to, to Trump. Mm. And, and I could hear them talking. And he said, he said, now, by God, there's only one president, me. Mm. And he said it very derogatory. And that's what he said. And I heard in the way Elisha would hear those conversations, the king of Syria. Mm -hmm. And then in that other ring, I saw this staff. It came up in the air and it went down in the other ring like that where Trump's ring was, just like that. Wow. And the Lord said, and I That's knew. That's authority. 
Yeah, the authority and I, went back right. to Trump, Donald Trump. Yeah, and he said, he said, the prophetic, the prophets will hold his place mm. until he comes. Until he comes. Wow, in the spirit. And so, and people say, think, well, you know, this is, this is wild. This is wild. They never thought abortion would ever be shaken the way it is now, but it is, That's right. and it happened in the night. It's just like that. <laughs> 